Now, Sri K. Parasaran. Thank you, Deputy Chairman. I fully support this bill. I congratulate the Law Minister for choosing the route of I mean, amendment of the Constitution instead of an ordinary legislation, as was done on the last occasion, which we all debated. No one in this House is contrary or against the independence of the judiciary. Every one of this House, every member of this House, is for the independence of the judiciary. And independence of the judiciary means institutional independence of the judiciary and is not related to each individual judge at the time of appointment. At the time of appointment, there can only be a prognosis as to whether he will be independent or not. It is a, a great error in the approach of many of the judges and even some, some people who speak about it is in thinking if the executive has to say he will be not independent but will obey the executive. This is a wrong conception. If this is true, if he was his appointment to judges, he will not be independent of those judges. Therefore, this is a wrong logic. The Constitution originally vested the power of appointment in the President on the advice of the Council of Ministers only after consulting the chief judges of the Supreme Court as the President may deem fit, and also judges of the High Court. This is what the Constitution, and when it is appointing a you know, puny judge, the chief justice of India shall always be consulted. The Supreme Court rewrote Article 124 and substituted concurrence for consultation. They overlooked Article 233 of the Constitution, where the founding fathers used two different words in the appointment of district judges, which is also part of the judiciary. In Clause 1, they said consultation with regard to postings and, and promotions of district judges. But in Article 2, they said on the recommendation, the government shall appoint on the recommendation of the High Court. Neither 124 nor 217 use the word recommendation. Now, the next aspect of the matter is there is clearly already an imprimatur of the Supreme Court for going with an amendment of the Constitution. We, have, we must see that the nine judges' judgment was consequent to a reference by a bench of three judges in Subhash Sharma's case. The Supreme Court said, we are aware of the position that was as early as 1991. The Supreme Court said, we are aware of the position that the setting up of the National Judicial Commission through a constitutional amendment is in contemplation. In the event of the amendment being carried and a National Judicial Commission being set up, the characters of the ratio in S.P. Gupta's case of the status of the Chief Justice of India may not be necessary to be examined in view of the fact that the amendment, by that by the amendment, the Chief Justice of India would become the chairman of the commission. In case the commission is not appointed, the two questions indicated above, which are vital, have to be decided by a larger bench. Therefore, they say, if you have a judicial appointment commission by an amendment of the constitution, this entire excess of primacy and Chief Justice powers become academic and infructuous. We have already, the, and the learned judges said, whatever we have decided by the three judges are all final, except two questions, namely the position of the Chief Justice of India in relation to primacy and the justiciability of fixation of judges. The nine judges expanded their jurisdiction, but I don't want to ex expand my time because the time is very limited. The next is about the experience of two judges, each at different times, as members of the collegium. Therefore, they are not outsiders, but insiders who knew the working of the coming, of the, the collegium of the Supreme Court. I am not referring to the unnecessary controversy raised by a learned judge, which has rightly been uh, uh, caused anguish to the Chief Justice of India. One of them said in an open lecture, a memorial lecture in memory of one of the great juries who practiced in the Supreme Court after he retired as a Bombay Court judge. She said, consensus within, consensus, I am quoting, consensus within the collegium is sometimes resolved through a trade-off resulting in dubious appointments with disastrous consequences for the litigants and the credibility of the judicial system. Besides, institutional independence 
has also been compromised by growing psychophancy and lobbying within the system. The psychophancy necessarily means the psychophancy to the members of the collegium to get appointed and, yes, and their lobby. Besides, institutional independence has also been compromised. I, I'm sorry. The Parasaranji, I'll take one, one I, I think uh, there is, uh, uh, you are quoting from? Uh, I'm quoting, I'm quoting. From where I'm are quoting. you quoting? From it is from Mr. Justice Rumapal. No, no, even if it is quotation, no, no. Uh, I am not discussing no, no. the context of a judge. I am not no, referring no. article 212. We no. are in the context of appointment of judges. No, no, the point we are is, not in their adjudicatory no, no, jurisdiction. No, no. I know the proprietor. No, no, the point it is, is a, by a sitting judge. I am saying by a retired no, judge. No. In a open I speech. I am afraid. Let me. Let if me. she can do it openly outside, I can do it inside the house. No, no, the See, no, no. What you. No, Parasar, let, let, let me, let me. See. What you are going, what you are going to say, or you are saying, is going to be part of the record of this house, Parliament. Yes, yes sir. Yes. Now, you are no, not indirectly, you are directly, directly attacking the collegium, and say that. that now, please. Referring to a remark of Justice Rumapal of Supreme Court. Absolutely. It is not yes. his words. No, no, no. And it outside, is not the, his and words. outside no. the house. As, now, and outside the house. My, my point is. Even if he is referring to a judgment or X or Y, he said, if it, 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 you know, if it is derogatory to a judge, yeah, it's, if it is a, then, then how can I allow? That is my point. No. 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 Because the very bill is challenging that uh, collusion no, no, system. That, no, the the bill are, itself speaks about against no, the collusion no, 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 system. No, no. That is a, see, you are on a constitutional amendment. Uh, constitutional amendment by which you want to enable the government to bring another bill. That is okay. You can justify that. But here the honorable member is directly attacking the collegium and say that collegium, that is the point. No, even if it is quotation, that's what I'm saying. That's a cited judgment. No, no. He's not doing saying anything but, wrong. No, and no. as a member, he has every right. This is in public domain. Whatever, see, all the all that is in the public domain, you cannot come and vomit here. You cannot come and say here. No. So many things. No, no, please. He should contempt of court. Why it should be deleted here? No, He's just quoting. As long as it is a direct criticism of judges, and as long as it is derogatory to the collegium, can I allow? Collegium means a group of judges. Can I allow? The right is, sir. He has been a distinguished attorney general. Let him speak. No, no, that you are not to teach me. No, no, that you are not to teach me. That is not the way. No, no. No, no, you see that. Respected deputy chairperson, I will leave it at that. I will leave it at that. I will go to the next point. I got too many good points. Okay. Don't bother about this. Okay, okay. Leave so at that and may, proceed. Yes. Okay, okay. Another judge who had been a member of the collegium, I am not going to talk anything derogatory. He has said, it has appeared in today's newspaper, that as the years passed, burgeoning criticism that the present system did not remedy the drawbacks of the yesterday's mechanism have eventually become more strident, more strident. At least in a few instances, unsuitable persons have found their way to seats of judges in the high courts. It is, of course, a matter of relief that the number of such persons has not swelled to allowing proportions. Therefore, the need for this amendment so that it does not swell to allowing proportions. At the same time, it would not be true to say that no unsuitable person has reached the Supreme Court bench through the collegiate system. I am not casting aspersion on the judges. Here, the judge who has been a member of the collegium says, he says, it would not be true to say that no unsuitable person has reached the Supreme Court bench through the collegium system. The lesson to learn is that however much improvement is sought to be achieved through changes to the appointments process, the efficacy of its working depends 
on the vision and dedication of the persons empowered to manage the system. This, uh, this system has been many judges, many members of several bar, several people have said that it is there's a system has failed. That was the need for this amendment. What is more, let us not go into the controversy whether you are criticizing a judgment or not, but I am sure I have worked up the case law. I am not uh, attacking the conduct of the judge and that too in the discharge of their judicial functions. I am on a system of appointment. A system of appointment can never be said to be a derogation of a judge. But I will go to the next point. What is more, they not only appropriated the entire power of appointment in themselves, which was in the executive, which is collectively responsible to the House, both. Because the principle is, ours is democratic, the democratic sovereign, so that the three limbs have to function in the such important matters, namely the judiciary, You have taken much more time. Two minutes more. Please forgive me. It's a very important Okay. Topic. No problem. I will reduce your time and give you more. I have no problem. Yeah. I'll take two more minutes. Okay. Not only power of appointment yes. has been taken over. I will reduce the time. Others. Okay. Don't get angry. You don't get angry. Okay. No, no. I will obey the chair. I said only I reduce your time. Please. Sir, I am not enamored of my voice. Please, please. please. I have Please continue. The moment you say, please. I will listen to No, please continue. The, the whole no, house Supreme. want you to speak. Then, no, no. Why, then why should I? whole house want you to speak. Not you only speak. the Supreme Court appropriated the power of appointment. Many of us have not noticed they have appropriated themselves the final say in the matter of removal of their judge. The Supreme Court held, you, sir, you are, all of us know how the, in, in, the, the removal of a judge starts by either 50 MPs here or 100 MPs there. The chair with the president or the vice president, then I'm sorry, the speaker or the vice president then makes a reference. The chief justice constitutes a committee of a sitting judge of the Supreme Court, a chief justice of the High Court, and a jurist. After that committee finds him guilty, he comes for an address before that house and this house. And after an address by both the houses, and that too, a special majority like Article 268, Amendment of the Constitution. Therefore, it's an excess of a constituent power. The Supreme Court says he cannot come by a judicial review against the finding of the committee, but after the, both the address, both the houses have, have had the address and the judge removed, we have the power of judicial review. Therefore, even the removal of judges after address by both the houses, the Supreme Court can judicial review. So that they so add a rider, but narrow area. We know what that narrow area is. So the power of up, appointment of judges was taken over. The power of removal of judges, though in parliament, uh, has been taken over. This is the position in which we are. And the Supreme Court today says extensive jurisdiction. Forget the appointment. Therefore, all the more necessary, there has to be a check and balance. And that check is, substitute, is given by this, uh, by this amendment. Well, if I can take two minutes, I will otherwise resume my statement. Yes. Everybody yes. want you to speak, then I don't want no, to. No, no, I can't disobey the chair. Please. I, I follow your discipline. Please continue, please continue. I follow your discipline. Please continue. Yes. Now, there is one thing very important, and that is the, it consists of number one, the Chief Justice, and two judges of the Supreme Court. And the judgment of the Supreme Court said the Chief Justice is chairman, that's a very good safeguard. His very presence, his personality will be a control. These are the three, that's the judiciary. Then the next to be there is the law minister. The executive must have a seat. And correctly, law minister is included. The next is, is very often argued, government or litigants before the court. This is a criticism. Government is bound to be litigant, was known to the founding fathers of the constitution. They gave fundamental rights in part three and gave also article 32, a remedy to the Supreme Court. That is, the state will violate your fundamental rights. We, have got, we are the guardians. Sentinel on the Kwai Wai to protect your rights. And that too is a very unique provision, which is nowhere, anywhere in the world. It's both a right and a remedy. Therefore, they knew it. And therefore, it's a wrong criticism to say that the executive should not have the power. Only, only one word more. Only one word more. If I can, with your permission. Yes, sir. Yeah, Lord Simon said the power of the court is referable to the people. The power of the people to decide has been delegated to the judges. This is what he said. And therefore, people must also have a say, because citizens are also parties before court. So the government is a litigant, 
is represented by the Raw Minister. People are, we are litigants before the court, they are represented by two eminent persons. And we all know how they are to be constituted. The, the, now the time is getting over. The, uh, the bill says so. That okay. all, it consists of the judiciary, the executive, the, though it's a litigant, it has to be there, and citizens who are also litigants. Okay. There could not have been a better provision than this. And therefore, though I have got a lot to say, I don't want to be mistaken, I'm holding a law class. Somebody made a protest, this always will talk as we are doing the law class. It was not my intention. I wanted to ensure that these amendments are not vulnerable to any attack by the court. Yeah. That I reserve for the bill. I thank you for the extended time. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you.